those. No, nope, I don't need those. Hey everybody, Jim from uh, RainforestStationPets.com. We're doing an unboxing today for a plant grow light. Uh, this is an ECRU LED grow light. And let's see what we got going here. Very small unit, very compact. Hardwired in, a lot of these have a plug at the end where you can plug that in. Um, minimal instructions here. And a lot of little hangy stuff here. You can hang this maybe a couple different ways. It's even got cable ties in here. So if you're a kind of person that does that. It's got a little bend in the metal here already. I suppose we should probably expect for this price of a bend there. Uh, for this price, you probably shouldn't expect a huge amount because this light, um, uh, manufacturer again is ECRU. It says on the box, ECRU. Um, it's got a weird model number. Um, when we were doing these, buying these lights for this comparison, we wanted to stay 30 bucks or under, uh, just to kind of stay in the house plant uh, range for what people might want. Um, because we had to bring our house plants in, and that's what started this whole process going. Was uh, looking for uh, one for our own house plants. Um, I kind of passed over this one the first time around because it was so small, I didn't see how it could do what it said it was doing. But the more I looked at them, uh, it, does, it only has 50 LEDs. And it's a full spectrum light, so it's supposed to produce white light. Um, of the LEDs, it has eight that produce red light, two that produce blue light, 24 that produce a warm white color, and 16 that produce a cold white color. Uh, the difference, if you don't know, between warm white and cold white, cold white is more like sunshine. Uh, it's a little more bluish, and it falls into about a 6,500 to 6,000 to 6,500 degree Kelvin um, scale of light, which is a measurement of light temperature, which is color. Uh, I've got a link to a little more information on that on the website. Uh, in the overall article for these that uh, you can look that up if you're more interested. Um, warm white tends to be more around, you know, 3,500 K um, Kelvin. So this one, um, it, the, the range of color in the visible light spectrum that this projects is measured in nanometers. Uh, this one goes from 380 all the way to 780. 380 is at the very end of the visible light spectrum on the blue end, uh, 780 is inching into past red into infrared, so it probably produces a little bit of infrared radiation as well. Uh, it says it consumes 27 watts of power, uh, supposed to be an equivalent to 150 watt standard, uh, like maybe a high pressure sodium bulb or metal halide bulb. Um, it says the maximum coverage is a two foot square area, but it never says at what height. So um, the thing that is most important with a plant grow light is how much of the light coming out of this is what they call photosynthetically active radiation or PAR. But that's not a measurement as much as a description of the light coming out of this. For a description of or a measurement of the light coming out of this, you need to know how much light is hitting a particular surface over a particular time period. And the way they measure that is uh, photosynthetic photon flux density. And I actually said that right for the first time in all of these videos, the first time. Um, what that is, is a measurement of how many photons that create photosynthetic activity in the plant are hitting a surface that's a meter square every second. And that's um, measured in micromoles. And you'll see that in the description here, how, that, how you see that. Um, it's telling me here that at 12 inches, this is producing 300 micromoles of photosynthetic photon flux density. That's a lot for a light this little. I've got lights twice as big that don't produce that. So we'll be testing that in a few minutes here uh, with our LED light meter, <coughs> which reads in locks, not in, in uh, PPFD or PAR. 
so we have to do some finagling uh, mathematically to get to it, a number. It's not going to be perfectly accurate. It might not even be really super accurate, but it will tell us between lights which is stronger, which is weaker, and it'll give us an idea of how high to put these off the plants, I think. Um, other features on this, uh, like I said, we kind of passed this one over because the, the price when we first looked at it was $29.99. Um, it was number, I can't remember if I said this now, it was number 91 on the top 100 selling uh, plant lights on Amazon and had a 4.4 average rating on reviews out of five stars. But right about the time we were getting, and keep in mind, all of those numbers are snapshot. That stuff changes hourly on Amazon. The, photo, the 100 top best rankings changed literally every time I looked at them. So basically we looked, we took a snapshot of when we were buying them, where they were. So those numbers, don't expect them to be the same. Even the price, for instance, because uh, like I said, we passed this over the first time around because it was $29.99. That just seemed a little bit high uh, for what we were planning on doing. Because that's 30 bucks is the very top is what we were willing to spend. But right about the time we were getting ready to buy it, it went on one of Amazon's lightning deals and we got $10.45 off of that $29.99, plus there was a 10% coupon off of the original $29.99, so that's an extra $3. So we got $13 off of a $30 light, which very quickly um, changed my attitude about it. So we're gonna uh, get set up to do a little bit more testing here in just a minute. Um, it's probably gonna take us a couple hours, but for you it's just gonna be like snap of the fingers, because that's how video works. Um, I can't think of anything else to say, so I'm going to try and find a good spot where I can trim that off and we will move on to the measurements. And needless to say, I didn't find a good spot to trim that off. But here we are, we're setting the light up 12 inches over our workbench because that's where the reading for PPFD was in the literature. So we figured that would be the fairest place that we could test it from. Uh, first, we got a 745 lux reading of ambient light in the studio, so I want to record that and make sure we can use that to subtract out from some of the other figures later if we need to. Um, we get ready to turn the light on, and we can check it with our pony electricity monitor, which starts out uh, almost 30 watts current draw, but it's bouncing around, comes down, goes up, comes down, goes up, which is pretty typical of these. Looks like it's kind of settling in about uh, 28.5 watts. Let's keep an eye on it for just a second longer here. And it's still, yeah, it's bouncing up and down, but it's staying pretty well in at about 28.5 watts. So we'll use that if you want to calculate um, current draw per lux or per uh, micromole. Underneath the center of the light, we get a pretty good reading of about 15,000 lux. Um, pretty respectable for a light of this size. But once we begin to pull to, away to the sides, that light reading drops off really precipitously. So it's just a little bit worrisome how quickly that light drops off. So we're going to do something and install it in place. We've got two lights on this shelf. We've got the ECRU unit on the left hand side installed 12 inches in from the left end. And then the other lamp that we're using is the Roliadro full spectrum plant grow lamp. And that one is installed 12 inches in from the right side. So theoretically, both of these lamps say they can cover a two foot square area. So the two of them together should be able to cover a 48 inch shelf with no problem. So once we get them in, get them installed and turned on, we got to get the light meter out again. So we take the reed light meter unit and we're going to set it up for a warm white light because that's a pretty good average between the two different lights of, of the kind of light coming out of them. And then we take the removable probe 
and we're going to go test first along the left, left edge at the front and the middle and then the back corner if we can get it turned up the right way that is and then we're going to come down along the edge of the 10 by 20 tray which is right about smack dab under the light and you can see there we're getting about 11,500 in the middle um, there we're getting you know far far less so as you can see in this the light really drops off in this graphic so we figured out we needed to do something so we decided to revamp our setup we added a 24 inch general electric plant grow light in the middle of the 48 inch long shelf and turned the ECRU and really ADRO lights perpendicular to the shelf. As you can see in the second graphic coming up here, it changes the whole situation pretty significantly. And we do end up having enough light for each of the tested units are going to cover a uh, 10 by 20 tray almost perfectly and the GE covers the middle for the rest of the situ for the rest of our plants